Good afternoon, Westwood. The Wolverine Report special edition. We had highlighted the last couple weeks about top 10 plays of the spring season. We asked you to do your civic duties as a Westwood resident, Westwood citizen to vote. You guys did. We have the outcomes. We also mentioned that we have our own top 10 favorites, so we'll go through those. And then ultimately, we're going to go through the top 10 voted on by you. But before doing so, we have some honorable mentions. Evan, do you want to talk about the honorable mentions that we had for the uh, the uh, spring season? Absolutely. So we gave you, the people, the option to give us some honorable mentions. Morgan and I did a lot of games together. And while we remember most of the moments, it does get hard to remember all of them. So I wanted to highlight one in particular that came up more than once, which is the Westwood High School track and field program. So we had the opportunity this year to record a track meet for the very first time. So we went to the uh, May 1st track meet against Ashland and we recorded the entire track meet with the help of Elliot. Shout out to Elliot. Thank you for all your help this past se uh, season. And one moment that came up in particular was during the 800 meter race end. So during this race, one of the rest Westwood runners had the lead, he had the lead for most of the um, run, and then right at the end on the final stretch, he fell. Now Westwood still took home the win, they ended up placing first, but he did get up and he kept going, which okay. I think was no uh, noteworthy. It's great to see when athletes fall, they get up and they keep going, and that's what we look for in our Westwood yep. athletes. No so quit. I wanted to mention that moment first. That's awesome, great, great highlight, no quit. Competing till the very end, and ultimately Westwood getting the win. You know, what, what, a, what, a, uh, what a memory. You know, so shout out to Westwood Track in that memory. Uh, but we are going to jump right in, folks. So I have my top 10. Evan has his top 10. And then we also have the people's top 10. So we're going to start off with Evan and his top 10, starting with number 10. My number 10 moment for the spring 2024 season is the first goals for freshmen in boys and girls lacrosse featuring goals from Will Stuhler, CJ Hancock, Bridget Hughes, Ava Meredith, and Jillian Walsh. And part of the reason I picked that, you know, we've talked a lot about it before, especially in our first episode, where watching those goals, it breathes a life into the team and it just kind of energizes them. The whole team surrounds them. And we had five moments there specifically, but each moment was felt just the same. It brought the same energy and I thought it was worthy of getting the number 10 spot for me. Absolutely. That was a great memory, uh, a lot of fun, and you know what, we're going to remember those goals for a long time, especially when they're seniors when we said we covered those first ones. Number 10 for me, CC Thurman scoring three goals, setting the tone in the round of 16 playoff game versus Westboro. What a season CC had, amazing. She, you know, the beginning of the season was more of a, a playmaker. She was setting up a ton of assists, especially to Nazalillo. Second half of the season, she was a dominant goal scorer, and the way she set the tone in that playoff game was unbelievable. They came out with a chip on their shoulder, they got off to a hot start, and really set the tone for a big win in the round of 16. Yeah, this that moment in particular too is such a it's really impressive that yeah she started to kind of get into that swing of things later on during the season, but to do that in the round of 16 against an opponent who had to win to get there. That says a lot about her skill and the ability to set the tone that early and that dominantly. Yeah. That's worthy of being number 10 there as well. Absolutely. And I think she recently just committed to play lacrosse, I believe, at uh, Stony Brook or Hofstra, one of the two. So uh, apologies. Um, I, I think it's one of the two. Um, but congrats to CeCe. Amazing year. And, you know, it's got her uh, college decision already uh, chosen. Um, Evan, number 10 from the people. The people voted, and they voted for Jaden Pollock's save versus Dover Sherburn as the number 10 play. And that goal, that was an electric goal. I remember that game. You and I were filming it. That game in general was such a big game for Westwood. To play through the elements, to play a tough battle, and then to be in it towards the end, and for Jaden Pollock to pull that save, I mean, it's impressive how he could just, in that moment, just hold it and keep that win and hang on for Westwood. For sure. For sure. He kid who jumped right in there um i think you know first couple games he was getting comfortable he was getting used to uh being you know in the dish and he uh ultimately became one of the team's top players you know by the end of the season huge saves for some of the, the the most talented opponents especially medfield the playoff games that we watched uh huge huge saves all season long uh gonna be a really big player for them uh next year next year's season number nine from my top 10 i have kyle harvey Cause turnover, transition into a Westwood goal, I believe. Fredrickson scored the goal. Someone we haven't talked you know, enough about, Kyle Harvey. What a stud he was all year. 
uh, terrific player. Coach Todd Zaharik said, you know, what the season he had was certainly remarkable. Um, you know, I had mentioned on that uh, preview that his uh, he looks like a Division I uh, blue chip prospect. You know, would not be surprised if he uh, plays at the next level if he wants to. But what a uh, play, what a season Kyle had. Yeah, Kyle, and his, those turnovers, Kyle, we had a few of those we called. Yeah. That one stuck out the most because of that game in particular against Dover Shoreborn. It was a great game. Yeah. But Kyle Harvey managed to do that in – I think just about every game we covered, he had to have crucial t turnovers every game that, yeah. that kept the momentum in Westwood's favor. Sure. And having that is just imperative for their team. Yeah. And Evan, your number nine. My number nine play for the top 10 moments of the spring 2024 season is Izzy Walsh's three RBI triple in the TVL clinching game against Norwood that we filmed. And part of the reason I picked that there is that moment was just such an energy change. You know, when we were playing, I think at that point, they were only up, I think, three or four yeah. to one. It was still a relatively close game. And then it's almost as if that hit took the life out of Norwood Did. and yeah. sealed it for Westwood in that moment. You knew in that point that this was Westwood's game and this yeah. was Westwood's fate. So to have that moment and to have that energy swing was big. I thought it was a great hit. And also it was a great shot into, I believe, center left field. Yeah. So... I mean, it's one of those plays that sticks out of my head. Right down the line, goes right over the bag. One run's going to score. Malkin scores. They're going to wave Poles. Poles is in there. And then the throw to third, Izzy gets in. She gets up on the bag, and she's celebrating, dancing. Um, and she was pumped up. And I said, freshman Izzy Walsh. You know, so impressive, the freshmen, what they provided for girls softball this year. What a, what a great memory that was. Number nine, chosen by the people. John Bertone, bomb to left field to score two runs. Baseball game versus Medfield. Folks, if you haven't heard of John Bertone, uh, you will. Because this kid is a leader on the Westwood Wolverines uh, baseball team. He's one of their top players. He is a catcher standout. He does amazing with the pitchers. He produces at the plate, and he keeps balls in front of him. There's not too many pass balls you'll see by him. Certainly a kid who could potentially be a captain as a junior. Keep an eye out for that. He's certainly a lock for a senior captain, in my opinion. But a kid that is going to do a lot of great things, has two more years left eligibility here at Westwood. Yeah, that game, too, that hit was at a crucial time. It was another game similar where Westwood had a close game. And then at that moment, had, scoring two runs started that snowball effect. That was a game where they mercy ruled. They were mercy yes. ruled. That big of a hit at that moment really swung that game for Westwood. It created a dominant win for them, and it was a big part of their baseball season. Absolutely. At number eight, for me, I had Hillary Noble's score on senior night against Ashland. Yeah. And Hillary Noble was a great defensive talent all year. You know, she had a lot of turnovers in crucial moments. But, you know, to see her score on senior night, that's a special moment. Yeah. That's a great team moment. And I just I like I thought that was a great play. Yeah, I agree. She is she led the defense this year. She had been a great player for Westwood uh, the last few years. Committed to play the next level with Skidmore. But what a memorable goal! She's been keeping goals out of the net, you know, her career. And then to have that ball, you cross the fifty. Most of the time, you you know, she's an unselfish player. You see her, um, you know, pass it off to you know one of the goal scorers. But she saw some daylight. She took it, went to the net, still got it. She scores Hillary Noble, you know, on senior night, no less, you know, great memory for such a special player for the Wolverines. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great, uh, a great clip that, you know, we'll remember for a while. Yeah. Number eight that I had Caroline Nozzolillo six goal game versus Longmeadow. Longmeadow was, I think ranked, I think one ahead of Westwood. Westwood might've been eight. Longmeadow might've been seven in the MIA power rankings. And Westwood sent a message that game. And Caroline Nozzolillo had a double hat trick. I think I even referenced that double hat trick. There was, uh, I think, a, a few other players that had four or five goals. But she stuck out. She was going right to the net. She would take some contact. She was not afraid. She was certainly on a mission from the start. Uh, but what a remarkable game in the regular season. Set the tone and really showed us the upside that Westwood Girls Lacrosse has, you know, going into the later part of the season and the playoffs and, and, and the promise that this team had and how high how high that ceiling was. That six-goal game was great, and what's even crazier to think about is I don't believe that, that was her only six-goal game. I can think of a few times where we had other players, too. I know we had as an option as well that 
I believe it yeah, was Charlotte, a, Charlotte DeMeo, a had DeMeo one. six yep. goal game yep. for Westwood girls lacrosse to have multiple six goals yeah. goal games is just speaks volumes to the program they have, but also the players yeah. to have multiple nozzle little game, six goal games to choose from says a lot and is great for the offense. Yep. Evan, number eight from the people. Number eight from the people is the nozzle little to Thurman buzzer beater goal against Neshoba regional. Now this, this play was interesting because it wasn't game winning. It wasn't, you know, it was at the end of, I believe the first period, but they were already up a few mm -hmm. and they get a turnover with about 12 seconds left. And I remember you counting as they're running down the field and to get that goal, just to show their mentality in the playoffs, that was how it was going to be. I think from that moment, we knew how the girls lacrosse playoffs were going to play out for the rest of the playoff run. You know, that's a, they're going to win and they're going to try to win in dominant fashion. And for their two wins in the Shoba regional and long meadow, they did just that. Mm -hmm. It was uh, when I coached hockey, I used to say, you never want to give a goal up in the last minute of the period. The reason why is because in that intermission, you have all that time to think about that. And that's not the type of thought you want to have. And the other team is thinking about that big goal and the momentum shift there. So what a momentum shift that was. Um, it was like clockwork too. Just while the clock was, you know, uh, winding down the quick passes, then find Thurman in front of the net for the goal. Uh, what, what a goal, what a finish. Um, you know, it's certainly a memory that was, uh, uh, you know, a great memory and certainly a rightful top 10 play. Yeah. At number seven for me, I have Brendan Sendjik's game winning single against Ashland. And the reason I put this here, what more can I say? Game winning single bottom of the seventh tied four, four to hit a single shot in and drive in a run impressive and you saw it in their reactions you saw the electric the electricity of just that hit and that team all come out and celebrate mm -hmm. that was a hard fought game in the rain mm -hmm. we were out there in the rain gear it was like 10 a.m I think, right? yep yeah. they had a it was their week off yeah. so and ashland had gotten rained out a couple weeks prior so we went to a 10 a.m game and it was just a hard fought battle in the rain and for that to be the end of the game to seal it off was something special yeah, that was a great play. I mean, he I remember him, he, great player. Keep an eye on him. He had like a short swing, so he wasn't swinging. He's just a line drive hitter. Great in the field, but short swing, put it right, I think, right up the middle. Um, scored one, and then Dayton came around to score the winning run. Walk-off fashion. Some of those wins are really what bring the team closer together. They also just really help build some momentum. I certainly think that was the case for Westwood going into the uh, the middle part of their season in the second, the second half of the season, ultimately into the playoffs as well. Number seven uh, for me, Jen Mackin, draw controls for Long Meadow. We mentioned the Long Meadow game earlier, Nozalillo, six goals. Part of that is because Westwood kept getting possession. Jen Mackin had 12 draw controls. Folks, I can't tell you how impressive that is. That is, draw control is when you win the faceoff. She was winning some of these clean. She was, you know, lifting it up in the air, going up and getting it, catching it. The ones that were on the ground, she was fighting, uh, you know, tooth and nail to get those. But 12 in a game is unbelievable. She's a sophomore, folks. She's also put a lot of goals in. Keep an eye on her. She's really solidifying her, uh, her case as a top player on the team. She's one of the top returners. But very remarkable game that, that she had. Uh, 12 draw controls, unbelievable. It's the small stats like that, too, in a game that just push you to victory, mm -hmm. right? You know, we mentioned it with Jen Mackin, but also, you know, Timmy Malloy in boys lacrosse. Being able to win those draw controls just helps keep your foot on the pedal, helps keep you going. And ultimately, I think those draw controls directly contributes to all the wins both yes. boys and girls lacrosse had this season. You can't win if you don't have possession. You can't put the ball in the net if you don't have possession. So exactly. they are so critical. Yeah. Um, and what what a uh, asset Westwood has at the, at the faceoff dot. Not only that, the the, uh, the wings. You know, they had Charlotte DeMeo at the wing. Sometimes Emily would be there. They had Nozolo at the other wing. Sometimes it would be um, uh, uh, Sullivan, Kate Sullivan, too. So what a, uh, a great setup they had in so many possessions won. Um, number seven, voted on by the people. Final out to clinch the TVL championship softball versus Norwood game. As we were mentioning, I will remember for a long time, um, history made 41 years. It had been since their last share or 
uh, solo championship, TVL championship. An amazing night at uh, right behind Roach Brothers at Morrison Park Field, under the lights to see them celebrating on the field together. Uh, what a what a remarkable night! What an amazing memory! What a game! What an environment! All throughout, we were at Morrison Field, which was completely different from what we used to. The games we did were always at high school, which is a great field, but there was something special about winning that championship at Morrison Field under the lights, by the train station, having the environment that was there. It's just the culmination of that moment is just something that's special and should be remembered for a long time. Absolutely. Evan, number six for you in, in, in your top ten. At number six for me, I had CC Thurman's three goals to open uh, the round of 16 against Westboro. We talked about it earlier. Once again, for me, setting the tone of that game, a game that we would, we would see 20 goals scored in a playoff game, crazy. And I think if CC Thurman doesn't set the tone there early on, I don't. they might still score 15, yep. but I think having that crucial tone set is what helped them propel them forward. It gave them plenty of momentum and they built off of it and yep. you could see the confidence grow as they were going in i mean i remember towards the end of that game you were trying to keep up with the stats and mm -hmm. the tw the one they scored the 20th goal you're like oh they scored another one yeah and it was yeah. just that um i didn't know who it was because i was writing down the previous goal yeah yeah just to set the tone like that i think is worthy of being at the number six spot absolutely and i would i'm gonna say that 30 goals next year. She's going to have over 30 goals next year. I think she's going to do it. 30 goals, 30 assists is my prediction for CC Thurman next year. Number six for me, Izzy Walsh, three RBI triple TVL clinching game. We talked about it earlier. Someone who uh, I think is going to be a big player for the, the girls uh, softball team next year. Going to be a leader as well. At number six for the people's vote, we have Luke Chandler's three run home run against Walpole. That was a special home run because I remember about an inning before when Morgan and I were filming. I, I'm still new to Westwood sports. This was my first season, so please forgive me if I say things that are wrong. But I did ask Morgan, I was like, have you ever seen a home run at Russ Downs Field? And he said to me, no. He had not seen one in person. And then about two innings later, Luke Chandler changed that. Yes. And that that was a great moment, and that was a momentum shift. At the time, Walpole was ranked number one in the division two standings behind uh, and Westwood was number four. Yep. So, and wall pulls up one, nothing. So to come in and hit that home run. I mean, that just showed that Westwood could hang with the big dogs, Westwood baseball. And that that program was there. I agree. I, it was a huge home run. They were down, I think one, nothing yep. that, that home run put them ahead three to one versus the number one ranked team. I will give, I got to give MIA credit. Walpole was probably the one team all year. They made it to the state championship game. I, unfortunately, they lost to Plymouth, a hot Plymouth team. Um, but a memory I'll remember, a first home run I've seen at, at Rust Downs Field, went over the scoreboard. So it was an absolute laser shot. Um, but great, uh, what a, what a you know, memory that we saw because, yeah, as you mentioned, we were talking an inning before. Didn't think uh, you know, it would happen anytime soon. It literally happened five, ten minutes later. <laughs> At number five, I have Jaden Pollock's save with a one-goal lead in less than 30 seconds in the game against Dover Sherborne. Once again, we mentioned it before, it's a clutch performance. It's a clutch save from a young player as we continue to see Jaden Pollock develop. I think that's going to become more common. You know, to step in for his first season in that goalie position and for him to play the way he did, he has a bright future ahead of him. I'll be excited to see him next year as a junior. And at, to me, that's worthy of five there. Completely agree. And just to set the, the table of that point in the game, it was 30 seconds left. That save gave Westwood the possession back. Todd called a timeout. Westwood let the clock uh, run out. Game one versus a big rival of theirs. Medfield's obviously, you know, probably the, the biggest rival, but Dover Shearborn has been, you know, a major rival for them over the last uh, several years. Number five for me, Bridget Malkin in the park home run. Uh, it was a softball game versus uh, Ashland. So that was actually a game she had the no, the, she threw the no hitter, which, you know, the irony is, is I knew she gave up, I, I knew she hadn't given up a hit, but I wasn't sure about the run rule. So it was very anticlimactic, you know, when it came down to the actual call. So apologies, Bridget and, and uh, softball team. I'll be better next time knowing that, 
you know, the run rule is in effect and I will, uh, there will be more enthusiasm behind it. But it was a remarkable game on her, her part. A bunch of strikeouts, but to kick off that game within the park home run, she's hitting it in the right field gap as a right, right-handed hitter. It's, you know, an amazing hit. Went all the way kind of to where we were, right by the fence, and, uh, you know, really set the tone. And she, uh, her hitting is just as impressive as her pitching. In the Norwood game, she had, I believe, two triples. Uh, she had a few RBIs as well. She is just as impressive as a hitter as she is pitcher. And uh, that, that home run inside the park home run for that game, very special on my list. You mentioned, too, she that's how that game kicked off. And it wasn't just the first at-bat. It was the very first pitch. Oh, yes. Yeah. To immediately come out and hit off the first pitch. You haven't seen a pitch. Yeah. Hit a, a shot in between two outfielders and get it in the park home run. What a play. Bridget Mulkeen. We know we can see what she we see what she does on the mound. I believe over 500 career strikeouts already mm-hmm. as a junior. Yeah. And then on top of that, she's hitting doubles and triples yes. and home runs. Yes. Impressive stuff. Yes. And we're looking forward to next season covering softball. Absolutely. Evan, I am one with the people because the people agreed at number five, Bridget Mulkeen inside the park home run versus Ashland. So, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm well connected with the community. I, I had a feeling that we would have. You know, hit on one of these. So, congrats, Bridget. That was an awesome, uh, awesome clip, and you know, certainly uh, a great memory for the year. My number four. We are getting down to the, the crunch time now in our, our picks. My number four. Hillary Noble defense scores a goal on senior night. I mentioned it earlier. What a great leader. Unselfish. A lot of times she'd cross that fifty and she'd pass it to goal scorers. She's, she's a goal scorer herself. She did play midfield, um, you know, earlier on in her career and also in club. Um, I have seen a lot of her clips. I, I helped put together some of her highlight clips, you know, uh, earlier in her career. Great goal scorer. She was actually, she did some face-offs as well um, uh, on the Mass Elite teams. But what a rewarding goal. You know, it was just such a microcosm, and I know I use that word a lot, but a microcosm of, of just her leadership, her unselfishness, and, you know, how well-respected she is by her teammates because when she scored – uh, everyone was pumped up. Everyone was celebrating. So I have that as number four on my list. And my number four is the Dante Martucci behind the back goal against Dover Sherborne. Now, if we're ranking it based on calls, which we weren't, I was ranking it based on the actual play. But if we were to rank it on calls, this would have been my clear cut number one <laughs> because it's one of my favorite calls I've ever covered. The shame on me call uh, from you was electric, but it makes sense. Because I don't think anyone in this in Flay High Field thought that Dante Martucci was going to take a shot. He was going too fast. Troy Fredrickson makes the pass to him, and you think he's going to go set up in what you call Gretzky's office. But instead, he just surprises you with a behind-the-back shot. Great play. Caught everyone off guard, and it was a great moment. It was awesome. You know, uh, I think sometimes coaches, they look at those plays, and, and they look at them as low scoring opportunity plays sometimes you know they're like great you know as, as a major league the movie they go great catch willie mays don't ever do that again you know that's a, a funny clip um but not not for this play this play you know it was it was warranted you know there really was not much to shoot at with where he had the ball and the position he had um someone who clearly has practiced this a lot it was a very natural play and it was a big goal too i think it put them up too um or it might have gave him a one goal lead I, I can't remember but Big goal in a big game, and the call was awesome. You know, I make a lot of mistakes on calls. Um, you know, it, it's I'm not perfect. You know, and we we have fun with it. That's that's the thing. But it was a, it, it's the beauty sometimes is how things get delivered, and you know, in the moment. And that was a cool one because it was in the moment describing kind of what just went hap- what just went on. Shame on me. What a goal. The volume was up. Um, but yeah, what a remarkable play. Some, a play I'll, I'll remember for a long time. And then number four, voted on the people, freshman goals. So freshman goals, Stuhler, Hancock, Hughes, Meredith, Walsh. And uh, there was more than those freshman goals. Um, Sesselman scored uh, freshman goals. Um, Greg Walsh um, scored goals, um, the boys across team. And I'm sure there, there were others. Uh, but those are ones that we, we had called. So that was why we included on, on the list is the ones we had uh, filmed, games we had filmed, very special goals. Um, as Evan mentioned, having your teammates celebrate with you, uh, to have that uh, in video form, to be a memory forever, 
to look 30 years from now, really special. And it's all, ca- and as I mentioned after one of the goals, I think it's too late, go all captured on Westwood Media Center. So 30 years from now, when you, you know, you're telling your kids uh, about how good of a lacrosse player you were, you now have evidence you could you point to, and you can also tell them that you were ranked number four by the people uh, in the 2024 spring clips. My number three play was Luke Chandler's three-run bomb against Walpole. We talked about it earlier. I'll mention it again. Just having that, ex- seeing the first home run there was something special. And it wasn't just, you know, gets over the fence, barely. This is over the scoreboard. And from where we film at Russ Downs Field on the f- just past the first base uh, foul line, that's far. I, I, probably well over 400 feet. And for him to clear the board, impressive. He's going to have a great season upcoming. He can hit and he pitches. He's like Mulkeen in that sense. I'm excited to see what he does next season. Evan, your ears must be ringing because I had that as my number, uh, my number three as well. So definitely a great memory. Uh, I think Luke will certainly be a favorite for our team captain. You know, this upcoming season, a, a quiet leader, but one that plays and sh- uh, plays by example. And I know he's do- playing a lot of baseball this summer. He's playing for Legion. He's playing for club. Um, really looking forward to what he uh, what he's going to bring for next year. And the people, number three, Brendan Sendjik's game-winning single against Ashland. Talked about it earlier. Uh, that's a big win. Ashland's a tough team. They're always a top team in the TVL large. Westwood, you know, did have uh, uh, towards the end of the season opportunity to be TVL large champs. You know, they ran into a hot Hopkinton team who ended up being the TVL large champ. But you got to win those Ashland games. They're never easy. It's always a fight. You know, tooth and nail, back and forth. Westwood, uh, you know, with their last at bats, got it done. You know, and it was a freshman who did it. So, congrats, uh, Brendan. Great, uh, great hit you had. Game winning hit. And one of, uh, I'm sure, many memories that will be in the career of Brendan Sendjik. At number two for me, I had Bridget Mulkeen's in the park home run against Ashland. We touched on it earlier. What a way to set uh, set the tone for a game. But it was also a great introduction for us. That was our first softball game covering, and we didn't really know that team. Yeah. And that was our introduction to Westwood Girls Softball. What a great introduction and truly representative of that team as a whole. You know, it's very representative of that team as a whole. You know, big plays, big time plays. We saw it all across the games that we covered. And that, I think, was one of the best plays they had. For sure. I ran into um, to Matt Stuhler. Uh, he is Will Stuhler's father at Mobile. And he had mentioned that he loves the West Media Center coverage so much that he was watching games outside of lacrosse games. And he mentioned the softball game. And uh, it's hard not to... Uh, become interested in this team when you watch them play they play hard they play right um they love playing with each other they play for each other and you know seeing that clip seeing how uh, how excited they were for bridget how they rallied behind her too for a no hitter in that game it really uh speaks volumes of how special that team is really looking forward to that team in in the upcoming season as well my number two martucci behind the back uh goal versus overshare everyone talked about it earlier you know, we, we had Don Varner in uh, here earlier. We talked about that goal, special goal. Um, but, you know, that was fun goal. And uh, I'm sure that will be played. Uh, I'm sure if we checked five years from now on, on the views, it's probably going to be well over a couple thousand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that w- once again, just a great moment. We see just caught everyone off guard. But it's one of those moments that I think will stand the test of time. Absolutely. And the number two voted on by the people. Bridget Mulkeen diving catch. Uh, it was the uh, game versus Millis. It was, I think, the first. It was the first inning, and it was uh, there was a girl I think on first base and a pop up right between. It was close to the catcher, but Izzy Walsh is looking out, and that's one of the harder plays to make. And I think she hadn't spotted it yet. Um, Bridget did. Bridget's running dives. You know, I'm sure she got cuts or whatnot, raspberries from diving on the, on the hard dirt, makes the catch in the first inning, set the tone completely, was a 
were remarkable play. I specifically remember going, my goodness, you know, uh, what what a play. As a leader, someone who puts their, their body on the line for the team to make a play like that, it's not guaranteed you're going to make the catch, but to make that sacrifice be to try and get an out for your team, tremendous leadership. So I had that as my, uh, excuse me, that was the number two uh, pick by the people, and rightfully so. What great effort we see out of Bridget Mulkeen on that play, too. I mean, that's something that she doesn't necessarily have to do. The catcher could have done the same thing there. Mm -hmm. But just to show that you're going to give your team 110% every play, mm -hmm. I think that speaks volumes about Bridget Mulkeen as a player and as a person. So definitely worthy of being at the number two spot. Yeah. So humble, too. Like, oh. well-liked, well-respected by her teammates. And uh, you could probably go up to her and tell her, hey, you have – 550 strikeouts. How cool is that? And she would, she probably would give you the answer of I'm focused on Medfield, the next opponent. You know, it just seems such a humble uh, kid out there and, you know, so easy to root for. Yeah. And at number one, Morgan, you and I actually agreed on this. But the number one moment for us <laughs> was the final out to clinch the TVL championship for softball versus Norwood. Once again, we've talked about it a few times. That moment, I think is really truly what best describes the 2024 spring sports season you know 41 years of trials and tribulations and then to get that win in such in that fashion i think is just remarkable it's the effort it's the leadership from that team and i think it's the number one moment we had all season yeah i mean when you calling these games evan it's hard not to have an emotional connection to these teams. You just see how hard they work. Um, they're from our town. They're representing our town. They represent it so great with you, with how they play the game. As we mentioned, they, they work hard. They, they play team sports, team centric sports, but that memory was, was definitely, uh, an amazing memory. As mentioned, I have it as my number one as well. Specifically remember all the contributions in that game. We mentioned Izzy Walsh, mentioned Mal Malkin, also didn't mention Julia Tartufo, some big uh, doubles. And uh, Bella Gentile, a freshman. You know, so we're, those are three freshmen we mentioned. Walsh, Tartufo, and Gentile, um, all contributing in that game. And the memory, Tom Lydon was the MC. Uh, he was the PA at the game. And uh, it was remarkable. Like, when they had big hits, he'd be like, Julia Tartufo. Like, it was awesome. It was such a home field <laughs> advantage. And... When we had the call of, for the first time in 41 years, your Westwood girls softball team is TVL champs. And then Tom, uh, it was perfect timing. You can hear Tom's audio right after that. So a really cool memory uh, that will stick out for a while. TVL championships are not easy to come by. Um, you know, we, there's some teams that haven't had one in, in uh, you know, over 20 years. So they're very difficult to come by. So when you do get them, I mean, this one was 41 years. So when you do get them, Certainly uh, great memories and, and something worth celebrating about. And Evan, what was the number one voted on by the people? The number one moment voted on by the people for the spring 2024 sports season was Dante Martucci's behind the back goal versus Dover Sherborne. And we've talked about it once again. What a moment. I think this is a well-deserving moment, too. We've touched on it a few times about how no one thought that was happening. And you're surprised. I think. Moments like that are why people watch sports, mm -hmm. just to see something like that, something so energetic, something so unexpected. Mm -hmm. It draws people in, and I think that's why people voted that as the number one moment. Yeah, I mean, clearly um, the people have spoken. They love goals. They love artistic goals. Um, I think it was also a combination of it was a very artistic goal, uh, unpredictable goal, but also versus a, a big opponent in Dover Shearborn, timing of the game, taking, you know, one goal, two goal lead. So I will not argue with the people on that one. That's a that's a great memory. Um, and quite frankly, when I look at all the memories, you know, in the top 10, your top 10, my top 10 and the people's top 10, I really can't argue against any of them. You know, uh, all of these were such great plays. Um, they all are vivid memories from being there and, and, and covering them. Um, where, you know, well done, well done. So definitely want to thank all the voters for participating in the top 10. You know, this is a really fun, uh, fun, special uh, Wolverine report uh, 
you know, uh, discussion to have and looking forward to potentially doing something like this for the fall season and maybe the, the winter season. We'll see, you know, uh, but fun season. We can officially wrap, uh, put a bow on the spring season now. We can close that door and focus on the upcoming fall season. Yep. We are very excited for the fall season. We have a lot of great stuff that we're working on here at Westwood Media Center, and we'll be happy to bring it to you this upcoming fall season. Absolutely. We've got some great podcasts coming up too that have to deal, uh, that have connections to the fall season. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for following along, for watching. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, you know, the podcast. We are on YouTube, uh, Spotify, as well as Apple, iTunes, uh, and podcasts. So check those out if you haven't. But again, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for voting. And uh, this was a lot of fun, Evan. So thanks for uh, putting this together. Of course. Thank you for voting. We appreciate all the votes. And I'm looking forward to doing it again this fall. Absolutely.